Hey, fifth grade, Mrs. Phelps here. I'm excited to walk you through your sort two words and your sort two video. So uh, you are gonna pull out your Words Their Way workbook. We are working in sort two today, which is page five in your workbook. Okay, so these are the words that you are going to cut out and sort along uh, with me on the video. Uh, if you'll notice when we get to the words, I have notated a lot of the words. So I have uh, underlined some of the prefixes, which we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, and I've starred some words that may be ones, hint, hint, for you to know, hint, hint, for your quiz coming up. Um, so that would be something if you want to notate as well, I think that's a great thing. If it's easier for you to highlight or do something in a different color, that is completely fine too. Um, you are gonna be cutting these out and you are going to be sorting along onto page uh, seven with me as we go. Now, one thing you should know is I will always tell you the definition if there is a meaning of a prefix or a root word. Um, and if I ask you to write it down, hint, hint, that's probably something good to also know um, for your upcoming quizzes. So take a minute, pause the video, write this down on the bottom of page seven so that you have it um, to reference throughout the week. And then unpause the video and we'll get started. So these are the... Um, the prefixes we have this week, we are talking about a prefix. So prefix is something we add to the beginning of a word. Uh, for example, we have the word un. If you notice, we have this little, um, it's not an actual word, it's a part of a word, but it changes the meaning of it. Okay, so we have un, and then you notice this little hyphen. So um, un is something we can add to the front of a word and it changes its meaning. Now we just wrote down that un means not, okay? So for example, in the word uneasy, we know what easy means, not requiring a lot of effort, very comfortable. If we add un to the front beginning of it, we make a new word called uneasy, which means you it is not easy. Uh, for example, you might feel really easy about coming to fifth grade, right? You enjoy it, it's comfortable for you, no big thing. You might feel very uneasy, not easy, about going into a, a 12th grade anatomy class, right? That might be something that is not as easy for you. So let's look at some of the words that we have that use the un prefix okay the first word we have uh, is the word untidy sorry I bumped my camera we have the word untidy un meaning not so tidy is something that means to be very neat right so if you have an untidy room it would mean you'd have a not neat room which oh my gosh I know none of these sweet fifth graders watching this video have an untidy room right just I know that's not not the case at all we have the word unfasten. So fasten means to put together, right? So I might fasten my buttons. I might put the buttons together to close it. Um, I could fasten, uh, you know, stitches on in a, if I was having surgery. So if I unfasten something, I mean, it means to not fasten it, right? To unbutton, for example. We have the word unaware, that is a ding, 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 daily double, one that you should be aware of for your quiz. Um, so aware means you have noticed it, right? So if you are aware of, um, you know, something that has changed, maybe uh, your, your mom got a haircut and you are aware that it happened, you know that that's going on. If you are unaware, it means you are not aware that that's happened, right? Hopefully none of you would walk in and, you know, Mrs. Highland might say, surprise, you have a math test. And if you are unaware, you are not aware, ooh, that may not be very good for you. And then the last word is unknown. Now keep in mind this, that K is a silent K. So we have unknown. To know something means you have knowledge of it. Um, you understand it. If something is unknown, it means that you do not know about it. Uh, we could talk about that in terms of something you do, or it could be something that is unknown. You know, we are, you know, there is, um, it is unknown, um, some of the, uh, like some of the parts in science that we will talk about, and we'll kind of get to that. So leave that as we go. Okay, we have um, the root word, the prefix in, that also means not, right? So if we talk about this word insincere, sincere means you are giving an honest, um, uh, from the heart type of thing. So for example, if you walk in to fifth grade and you, and someone has a new binder and you really like that binder, you might give a sincere compliment and say, gosh, I really love that binder. That is really great. That would be sincere. Now, if you know Mrs. Phelps, you know that 
Art is not one of the talents that God has given me. He's given me a lot of things, but art is not one of them, right? So if you came up to me and you were like, oh my gosh, Mrs. Phelps, you're the best artist ever. Your work belongs in a museum. You would be giving me an insincere compliment, right? You're not being very sincere and truthful. And that's okay, right? I know that God gave me a lot of things. Art is not one of those. So let's look at some of these other words that are uh, that also have the prefix in that we can add to a word that changes the meaning of it. Okay, we've got the word inexpensive. If we know something is expensive, it means it costs a lot of money. Cars would be expensive. Houses would be expensive. If something is inexpensive, it means it is not expensive, right? So uh, I might go and you might think that, oh my gosh, getting a whole big candy bar from the vending machines at school is very inexpensive. It doesn't cost a lot. We have the word invisible, right? Visible means um, you can see. And actually, we'll talk about that root word, vis, in um, upcoming sorts. But uh, visible means it's something that you can see. Um, so if you are uh, out in um, Washington and you look across the bay, you might be able to have some mountains that are visible, right? You could see them. If something is invisible, it means it is not visible, right? We think about this a lot of times you hear it as like, you know, superhero, superpower, right? It's invisible. Um, we have the word indirect. So that's another word. Hint, hint would be good to know. So if you ask me that it's direct, it's like it goes point A to point B. It doesn't get lost along the way, right? If it's indirect, it means it's going to kind of go in a, a not direct fashion. It's going to kind of go around a little as we as we go. So for example, you and your mom go to Target, okay? You need one thing. You just need toothpaste, right? You can either make a direct path to toothpaste, Okay, you're just going straight there. If you take an indirect path, a not direct path, maybe you peruse the shoes and then you go and look at the clothes and then you're gonna take a look at the school supplies and then you're gonna get around to the toothpaste aisle, right? That might be an indirect route through um, to get to what you're talking about. Okay, and then the last word uh, in this one, ding, 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 to maybe know is informal. If we talk about something formal, it means it is something that is um, kind of important. It is something that is structured in a certain way. Um, it is very well known. Everybody understands it. So I'll give you a couple of examples when we talk about informal or we talk about formal. Uh, so you could say if you go somewhere to like a, a fancy, um, like a dance or something, they might say, hey, we're very formal attire, right? It is important. We have set the date of prom. We have decorated. It is a big deal. We want you to dress your best. We want you dressed in formal attire, right? If you dress in informal attire, that means it's not formal, right? Oh, just come in shorts and a t-shirt. No big thing, right? That would be informal attire. We can also talk about it in terms of things. Uh, so you could talk about, we have a formal meeting, right? Maybe your neighborhood has an HOA where they uh, have a group of neighbors who get together and plan things for your neighborhood, right? They might have a formal meeting. They send out uh, meeting notices and they send out emails and they let everyone know this is the date and the time of the meeting. It is formal, right? If you have an informal meeting, it just might be like, hey, there's a couple of neighbors that are down here in the cul-de-sac and we just all happen to be walking our dog at the same time and we're going to talk about you know what kind of tree we want to plant in the front of the neighborhood that might be an informal meeting right it's not pre-planned it's not very um, structured and put together it's just kind of like as it happens it does okay so those are your first two words we also have this prefix dis okay dis also means not so if we talk about this word dishonest if we talk about being honest, it means that you're telling the truth about it, right? Um, if you're dishonest, it means you're not telling the truth, right? So I could say, oh, if you're honest about it, you um, you ate all the candy and you told your mom, oh, yeah, sorry, mom, I, I ate the last cookie. If you're being dishonest, you might be like, oh, mother, not me. It was not me who ate the last cookie, right? As you as you um, are being, that would be you being dishonest. Okay, we have the word disbelief. Okay, so ding, ding, that's another word. We know belief is what you uh, believe or the things that you um, think to be true. So if you have disbelief, it means things that you do not believe, right? So it could be something you talk about something in surprise, right? I could, I had so much disbelief when I walked in and noticed that my dog uh, unrolled an entire roll of toilet paper, right? I was in disbelief. I was so shocked. I was in disbelief. 
um, as you go there. So it means not believing. We have the word disorder. So order we mean knows that there's a, a structure, there's a certain way of doing things that would be in order. So disorder would mean it would be out of order, right? Um, if you walk in and you originally had all of the all of your pens laid out in rainbow order and your little brother came in and messed them all up, he might have put them in disorder, right? They're not in order. Okay, we have the word disease. Um, now this one is uh, a word that means kind of like you're not at ease in the literal sense. Because Mrs. Phelps is a word nerd, she uh, did a little research. So uh, back in the 14th century when this word became kind of came to be used, uh, they used it to mean you were kind of in distress or you were in trouble, which if you think about a disease in your body, a sickness that you might have, um, you know, for example, you could have strep or you could have um, something more long-term. This is something where your body is not at ease, right? It's not, it's in trouble. It needs some medicine or uh, other therapies to, to help it feel better, right? So that's a disease. We have the word disconnect. So if we have connect, it means to join together. So if we disconnect, it means you do not join it together, right? So uh, you could disconnect from, you know, the internet type thing. You could disconnect Legos from each other. They would, you would take them apart. They would not be connected anymore. And then the last word we have in this section is discourage, okay? So we know that courage means bravery um, and willingness to do that. We were re reading about Emma Edmonds, right? So she has a lot of courage. If someone were to discourage you, they're going to um, say, hey, don't do that. Don't have a lot of courage to do this. Uh, for example, you know, if I, I for a long time was like, gosh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I should run this half marathon, right? I, I just don't know if I should do it or not. If I had someone who didn't want me to do that, they would say, hey, don't, you don't want to run a half marathon. You got to train a lot for it. It takes a lot of time. It's very stressful. Uh, it takes a lot of effort, that kind of thing. They're not going to give me the courage to try and get that done, right? They might discourage me. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Okay, and the last word we have, we have miss, miss, which means badly or wrongly. I know it's weirdly worded, but that's the actual definition uh, according to the dif dictionary, badly or wrongly. So, for example, if we have the word, the, the base word spell, if we add miss in front of it, it means we are going to badly or wrongly spell, right? So, you might misspell a word um, or your name. Hopefully not. Hopefully in fifth grade not, but you could do that. Okay, we have the word misbehave. Okay, so you know to behave means to uh, use good behavior to, to um, per perform or uh, engage in things that are, are uh, following the rules. If you misbehave, it means you are going to behave badly, right? You are going to be throwing things at lunch. You're going to be talking when Mrs. Phelps is talking. You are going to be badly behaving. Okay, we have the word misleading. Um, so to lead means to be the leader, to go out in front. Um, so if you are misleading someone, uh, it means you are taking them, it, you are leading, kind of going out in front and starting in a bad or wrong way. For example, uh, I might lead someone to a conclusion, okay? Uh, as we were talking about our UV beads experiment, right? I might lead you to the answer. So what did you think about this? Or how did you understand this? Or what do you think, right? That would be, that would be leading you, me going in front and telling you what to do. That would be leading. If I was misleading you, I would be doing that wrongly, right? I might be like, well, let me just tell you, these UV beads, the only reason they work is because of aliens. That's why. That's what happened. That is the reason why these UV beads work, right? I would be leading you badly or wrongly. And then the very last word for this uh, sort we have is mistrust, right? So trust means you um, put your faith in someone. You, uh, If they say they're going to do something, then you believe that they will do it. You have no reason to believe that they would not do that. So that would be giving someone your trust. If you mistrust someone, then you might um, not put as much trust or faith in them, okay? So um, if you trust someone, you might say, okay, you know what? On Sunday, we're going to go get ice cream. You might trust them. So you believe when Sunday comes around, you're going to get ice cream. If you might mistrust that, that might be, you might say, oh, well, I've, she said that four times and we have yet to go get ice cream. I'm not sure that I believe that she's going to 
take me to get ice cream on Sunday, right? So that would be kind of mistrust. Questions, email your teachers, but that is sort two for you fifth graders. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.